Hey everybody, welcome to our second uh, Candidate Cafe. Uh, your baristas today are myself, Justin. Uh, I'm in Connecticut, Robin Lorraine in Michigan, and Tom Wakely in New Mexico, right Tom? Yeah, and uh, so in this forum we are inviting candidates to talk a little bit about their campaign, uh, no more than five minutes, please and um and then invite questions we try to make room for everyone who's a candidate and because this is a um not a federal election year we are trying to prioritize candidates for uh, local or state office but if there's time at the end we can also do federal candidates um i see well, some people some people are back from yesterday um, um Justin, we can take like congressional and Senate. It's just the presidential ones. Okay. But they're both federal next year elections. But um, anyway, so we, uh, why don't we start with Robin? Because Robin, you didn't get a chance to talk yesterday. We we're having audio problems. And uh, you are running for office in Michigan, right? Correct. I, my name is Robin Leo Lorraine, and I am running for the Michigan State University Board of Trustees, and that is a statewide position. Uh, it's not. It's not local. So I have to campaign in all 83 state or uh, counties. We're a pretty large state. We have 83 counties. Last year, I was the top vote getter. I got to toot my horn a little bit. I got 80,000 votes and that got us um, ballot access. So that was really exciting. And I'm going to seek the nomination again and hopefully they'll give it to me. My first time I, I ran, I ran as a, in 2018, I ran for the House of Representatives and I got 2% of the vote. And I figured, well, Jill Stein got 2% of the vote in Michigan, Ralph Nader got 2.7. So I didn't do too bad for my first time out, I thought. And then I thought, well, next time I'm gonna go. And I, I've ran for Michigan State now uh, three times in a row and each time I've gained more votes. And so it's, it's a win or 5% because I really want Michigan to be a major political party. So that's what I'm, I'm going for. Uh, I have the honor of having Howie Hawkins uh, give me his support in 2020. He um, he gave me an endorsement, and I think that helped. And that was really nice because my opponent got Bernie Sanders to endorse him. So I felt really good that our presidential candidate endorsed me. And other than that, I do a lot of stuff for the Green Party. I'm kind of all over the place, but I'm really proud of the work we're doing as uh, outreach. So if anybody wants to join outreach, please do go to your state, have them appoint you because we're doing cool things, bringing new, new state parties into the federation, trying to help candidates, trying to help locals. We're just sort of doing a little bit of everything. And so with that, I'll hand it back over to you. Great, thanks Robin. And I forgot to mention at the beginning that if you are here and you're a candidate who would like to speak, please put your name and the office you're running for into the chat. And like I said, um, we won't go exactly in the order that the names are entered because we are gonna prioritize um, state and local candidates. And then after that federal candidates and then after that presidential candidates. Um, so, but please put your name and the office you're running for in the chat. Um, any questions for, for Robin? So Robin, you're running for State University Board of Trustees and the university, um, that's interesting. They are probably very important there in Michigan, University of Michigan, and they're huge, right? And they have a big, right. uh, what they do has a big effect on life in the state. They have a big economic effect. Right. So, our three major universities, uh, Michigan State University, U of M, and Wayne State, all have trustees that are elected by the people. We're one of the only states in the union, I think, that does that. I don't think any other state does it. 
But when you think about what you're doing, you're almost running a small community. And the trustees have made the decisions for everything. And our trustees in, at Michigan State have been just doing some crazy things. I mean, our, our attorney general said, please be transparent. You're doing things behind. And then you've all prob probably heard of the sexual abuse scandal with Larry Nasser. Uh, people know about that and they covered it up. And I'm, I'm telling you, if I was on that trustees board and I found out about that, how would it broke loose at that university? That wouldn't have gone on that long. And when I've done forums, I've actually sat on forums with the people that were in office. And uh, it's just, just crazy. It's just crazy the things. Every couple of months, it seems like the university is being sued by someone for something. They don't follow the title um, rules for girls sports. All that would change if I was on the board. I mean, it only takes one person. And what happens is they wear people down so people quit. And I'm so used to being worn down or people trying to wear me down that it, it just like, okay, that's how you feel. I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to keep going. So, um, that's what I hope to do. But like I said, it's one or 5%, because if we get 5% of the vote, then we can become a major party. And this last time it was really interesting. I was 0.1% below the libertarian. And usually the libertarians are way ahead of us. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a process and it's hard, but I'm gonna stick with it until we get to that 5%, because I think I'm making a dent. Sounds really good, Robin. It's an important, important subject, important topics there and issues. Any questions from the floor for Robin about her run and her experience running as a candidate? Um, all right, and you're working together with your uh, state party there, Robin, are they helping you? Well, we, in Michigan, if you go like into a bar or something, because I've done this, and I said, have you heard of the Green Party? And they'll say, yeah, that's that party that's all about ecology and smoking pot. And I said, oh, we're more than that. We're way more than that. So what we're trying to do, because Michigan came in flat dead zero for education, we've never done that before but we came in we came below everybody we our our state just got zero so we want to consider ourselves the education party so all of the education people like the um, secretary of ed that's an elected position all the university trustees they're elected we've done a slate and they made our state has already decided you know that they're gonna back all of us if we get nominated. So like, I guess I'm not making myself clear. Whoever gets nominated to that position, there'll be an education slate. Might not be me, it might be Jane Smith, but they'll be part of the slate and we're all gonna campaign together. Fantastic. Go to the, yeah, go to the different universities because there is sexual abuse at U of M too. And that kind of stuff just has to stop. Yeah. Our students should be safe. Um, yeah, one question from David. Uh, what's the term for state university trustees? Eight years. Wow. Eight years. Yeah. Is it staggered? Yes. Yeah. Every two years. Um, um, Oh, uh, to Randy, uh, we are going to we are letting presidential candidates speak, but we're just saving them to the end because the priority, as set by the coordinated campaign committee for this workshop, is um, state and local, and then federal, and then presidential. We did have a couple presidential candidates at yesterday's cafe who spoke, so we'll we'll get we'll get to you and let you uh, speak. Um, and we're going to prioritize people who haven't had a chance to speak yet. I see a couple of the candidates from yesterday who were here again, but who spoke yesterday, we're going to prioritize people who haven't spoken yet. And why don't we um, move on and see who else we have for candidates. 
Um, do we have other candidates who want to speak? Um, I see Jason Call has put his name in here. I don't see others listed yet for local office. Um, well, wait, Jason, you spoke yesterday. I did speak yesterday, and I'm certainly happy to wait until the end and everybody else get their chance. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else who's running for state, local, or, um, you know, congressional office who would like to speak? Um, Tehran, are you running for something? No? Okay. Well, um, why don't we go to, uh, let, let's let Randy talk about his campaign. Go ahead, Randy. Try to keep it to about five minutes. Certainly. Good afternoon, everybody. I intended to keep it to maybe a minute and a half. So that's, that's kind of what, the way I'm thinking about this because we got a lot of candidates we want to hear from. So a lot of you are familiar with me. Um, co-founder of the Green Party, first to register with the Federal Elections Commission, uh, co-chair of the Green Party of Florida here currently, and I'm going to be running a campaign based on ecologism economics, a term I came up with uh, quite some time back. Uh, I want to talk a lot about the situation in the Middle East. I think the international Greens can make a difference by putting pressure on the government of Israel, put pressure on Wall Street, put pressure on Hollywood, put pressure on West Coast tech, put pressure on New York mass media. And I think that that is an issue that can distinguish us from the Democrat party. Uh, I think it's very important um, that we, we focus on that, uh, create jobs without pollution, without new taxes. I would like to see uh, more focus of putting the green back into the green party. I think we've gotten away from that in the, in the past campaigns. And so once again, I, I wanna run a mainstream campaign here. As I, as I said before, 99% of my followers uh, on Twitter, now X, are mass media. So I'm gonna have a mass media focused campaign. I appreciate your time and I appreciate everybody listening to what I have to say today. Pull her out. Thank you, Randy. Um, any questions for Randy about his uh, presidential campaign? Rachel, go ahead. I'm sorry, I missed what, oh, it was a president. I'm hearing some really strange things. Um, for president, where are you out of, Randy? I'm out of Florida. Um, I actually organized the Green Party in DC, uh, Illinois, ran for mayor of Illinois twice, I might add, um, have strong roots there. And then California, ran for uh, office out in California um, back in the 80s got about 20% of the vote for Congress. So I've done quite a bit. And then here in Hillsborough County, which um, has the seventh largest school district, um, ran for uh, school board, got one out of every five votes and out, outspent 10 to one. My wife also ran with, we've got a disabled child. So we had a real focus on issues on that one. Randy over. And um, can you talk about your educational background and work experience? Absolutely. Glad you brought it up. I'll be brief. I attended the University of Missouri uh, and a Bachelor of Science in Public Administration. Now, my IT career over the years has been primarily um, focused on mainframe software. I uh, worked next to IBMer and focused on eco software and green IT. And that's an expertise I can bring to the, uh, the Green Party as well. Very good. Uh, Jasmine, you have your hand raised. You have a question for Randy. I do. I asked in the comments, is it all right if my staff reach out to you to schedule a debate? I I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Is it all right if my staff reaches out to you to schedule a debate? Yes, uh, at this point, um, it, it might be um, a number of debates. So yeah, have them reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Can you put your contact information in again? Sure. Randy, could you talk a little bit about, um, you know, your Randy. effort? Randy? Sorry. 
Oh, Randy, could you talk a little bit about your efforts to become a recognized candidate under the Green Party of the United States um, requirements? There's a certain number of signatures and fundraising requirements. Absolutely. And I think that's important to level set here. I'm only familiar with two candidates, West and myself, um, going through the motions of all of the, the processes there. Um, but I have not completed that with the, uh, the form yet. I'm working on that. Um, so in, in answer to your question, um, yes, I intend to try to meet those conditions. Um, I think that it's going to be a challenge. I think that West has an advantage here on that. But uh, yeah, everybody has to be held to the st same standards and hopefully they'll be the same as the time before. Any other questions? Oh, Jack Baldwin, go ahead. Yes, I would um, like to know uh, in what ways uh, your positions on the issues uh, differ from those of Dr. West, uh, to your knowledge. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the post-capitalist view, my idea of ecologism, ecologism economics, decentralization, self-determination, self-sufficiency, with the anti-nuclear theme running throughout, is a really different take on history and the way uh, it, the, the battle between capitalism and socialism and communism. I think I offer a fresh new idea there, and I think that West is challenged to come up with that post-capitalist view. So, so you're both calling yourself socialists, but in a different, maybe emphasis or process. Would that absolutely be not? Absolutely not. I'm not a socialist. No, you're not a socialist. Okay. No, I coined the term ecologism, the political manifestations of ecology, to describe um, a, a, an alternative to capitalism and socialism. Now, I, 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 I knew Petra Kelly, um, communicated with her, and. She used to go across to East Germany to protest communism in East Germany, but neither left nor right, but ahead. So I'm really a big one on that. I like to see Cuba become free, actually. So, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that the Green Party can do. And one of them, I think, is to just not get hooked on socialism. Um, uh, thank you, Randy. Uh, Starlene points out in the chat that there will be several virtual presidential candidate forums held this fall uh, by the Presidential Campaign Committee, the PCSC, for candidates seeking our nomination. So I encourage everyone to keep your eyes out for that. You know, we are a uh, party that has um, a process and a democratic process, and we have, um, you know, we're gonna have primaries. All our state parties will hold primaries, and we have a process for determining who this, the Green Party nominee will be. Um, we had, uh, you know, I wanted to move on, Randy, if that's okay, if there are no other questions. Thank you for coming and speaking. Um, I noticed that Rachel mentioned that she's considering running for local office. Rachel, would you like to talk about that a little bit? So I'm planning to run for city council in my small town of Crystal, Minnesota um, next year. Um, I'm not planning to start a campaign until June of next year. I'm um, wanting to get a local circulator bus here, um, an electric bus, just a small electric bus. Um, we have 23,000 people in this town. Um, it's a suburb of Minneapolis and um, wanting to also um, make the city more walkable. The city was designed for cars. Um, so um, we don't have sidewalks, for instance. Um, so I have an idea that some roads in the city could be converted to one way um, and then um, maybe a third of those roads could be um, turned into a sidewalk type area um, for biking and for walking. Um, and I'm really concerned about the state of our natural areas here. 
Um, I've already been involved with, I'm in the Environmental Quality Commission here, and I have been running a habitat, a volunteer habitat restoration program last year and this year officially. Um, and we filled out a grant application now this year um, so that it can actually be funded now. <laughs> so, um, Great. Yeah. Great. I'd, I'd right. like to see more solar panels on roofs here. I don't know um, what the process would be for the city to encourage that. Um, like I said, we do have only 23,000 people here and we have a pretty small tax base. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel, for running. This is fantastic. You know, I mean, these local issues are so important and it takes people getting involved to make these important things happen. I know here in my town, sometimes you, people run into resistance trying to get bike paths put in or sidewalks put in because people don't want them in their yard. They just, they like their yard the way it is. And you run into that kind of, um, there, there, there can be real pushback sometimes. It can make it be difficult to do things that we're trying to do for the community. Yeah, um, I think my idea um, it, for that process is to actually go to these neighborhoods and actually talk to the people um, to try to get buy-in on the ideas. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, people need to, to you need to show respect for people and go talk to them and listen to them and hear where they're coming from. Yeah, have, I think- Have the conversation. The, I know that there are people in at least my own neighborhood who complain about cars driving too fast. And I have a sense that if we incorporated uh, walking paths um, and one-way streets, um, it might slow down traffic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know, Rachel, I know you from the Eco Action Committee. And right. Yes. And so it's great, you know, to see eco, ecological wisdom minded people getting involved and uh, running for office. Thank you for doing that. Okay. Yeah, there... I'm actually, I got voted in as a delegate now, so I can officially be a member of the Eco Action Committee. <laughs> now as a as a delegate to the eco action or a national delegate so i'm a national delegate and my Great. i don't understand how everything works <laughs> but my understanding is that now that i was voted in for my state to be a delegate national delegate i can choose to be in a committee if i want to <laughs> um i'm yeah i'm not exactly yeah. sure that works exactly, okay. but I mean, yes, I, I was recently elected to, to be on the national committee as well, which is okay. our, you know, kind of the governing body of the of the national party and right. votes on decisions. And I think there's about 140 of us and um, each state has a certain gets a certain number a portion to them. Um, so, yeah, I'll be seeing you on the listserv. Are there any other questions for um, for Rachel before we move on to another candidate. I have one. Who's that? Robin. Yes, have I have one. So if you want to join a committee, a good to my home. This one is um, outreach. Every state appoint you to outreach. You'll do a lot of good work there. Yeah, I think we're having a little trouble with your audio again, Robin, unfortunately, but I'm pretty sure what you're saying is that you're recommending the outreach committee. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I caught enough of that to kind of glean what you're talking about. And uh, thank you for that. All right. If there thank are you. no. Thank you, Rachel. Um, I am. Scrolling through to see if there are any other local candidates. Um, uh, I'm only a candidate for cappuccinos. <laughs> so um, 
Margaret Elizabeth is here. Yes, Margaret is here. We heard we heard from Margaret yesterday. We could hear from her again today. But first, hi, Margaret. I want to hear from Craig because Craig was at our cafe yesterday and did not get a chance to speak. Thanks, Justin. Hi, everyone. So uh, my campaign, my campaign is like one that's been uh, kind of uh, flourishing for years. And I kind of went in to politics not thinking I was going to run for office in town, but you know, and I was kind of a member of the party. I don't know if some of you know some of my story and stuff, but I'll keep it quick. Um, Bruce Dixon kind of became like a mentor before his passing. And he's the one that kind of gave me that push to step up and run for state co-chair in New Jersey because I was kind of doubting myself and things. And he also said, if you want to, you know, work on local stuff, that's your that's your wheelhouse, then, then run local. So uh, I, I've been running since and I kind of wanted to be creative about it. So the whole kind of like kit and materials and everything has been the same thing I've been reusing because obviously we hate asking for donations. We don't know how to ask for donations. We want to maximize our dollar and impact. So uh, I'm running again for Ward 3 this time in Hawthorne, New Jersey. Um, I've been in this town now 19 years combined, and I became a member of my uh, town's Environmental Commission Green Team back in 2018, before the race, like about a good year, year and a half before the race. And uh, there's a lot of things that were kind of missing in local level. I don't know if people know New Jersey politics, but on local level, it's predominantly Republican controlled. Um, the Democrats don't really run on issues. They just run as their their name and they their D and they vote for them and that's it. But they don't actually get involved. It was shocked me when I joined my green team. There was no Democrats on it. It was it was full independents. It was full of Republicans and obviously a couple of greens in my town, which, you know, was was kind of cool to find out. So I figured I'm going to get involved with this. Along the same time, I started to get involved with Sierra Club and, and sign up with them. I kept in tabs with League of Conservation Voters just in case I needed down the road. And it kind of all culminated after running a few cycles to where last cycle was the at-large race and we didn't win, but I finally got a Sierra Club endorsement. I was the first Green in New Jersey to get that. Uh, right. League of Conservation Voters endorsed me as well. Um, and I'm seeking those endorsements again. I've been trying to reach out and seek other endorsements. Throughout the whole runs, I've had other ex-Democrat candidates, uh, you know, support me and, and uh, you know, write testimonials and endorsements. So this cycle is a little different. We're back to the ward race. So in our town, we have four wards and then we have three at large council people and, of course, the mayor. And um, it's predominantly Republican, like I said. So there's only one Democrat out of one out of Ward one. The rest is all Republican controlled. So the Democrats have seen all the work that we put in all these over, over these years of running and, um, you know, siding on the right side of issues. Um, all of it's all on my website still. There's a lot of stuff we've done in town to try to build momentum to where we are now. The Democrats did not field a candidate. So it's literally just the Republican, it's incumbent and myself. So the Democrats have already reached out and invited me to come to their mixers and fundraisers and things like that. I have not done that yet. I will obviously do something prior to mail-in ballots going out uh, to where I can actually just say, hey, I'm an option for you. Uh, going door to door for petitions was weird this year because I go to everybody's house. Um, the Republicans were supportive and signed. The independents and affiliated voters were, su were supportive. A few of the Democrats held a grudge and wouldn't sign my candidate petition, which is fine. So that gives me more impetus to try to earn their vote this time around. And I'll see if I can get the endorsement of the prior Democratic candidate that had run before. But a lot of the other Democrats that are running, I'm friends with, and we'll see how it goes. But I think we can finally break through on a local level. We've got flooding issues now more than ever the last two, three years here. There's been uh, development without focused development where uh, you know they're, they're causing intersections to be more crowded and, and now you need to implement either more stoplights or you really have to reduce speed limits. And I don't think that they realize that a lot of this impact, they should have thought about it a little bit better. We just had a pedestrian killed about a month ago in one part of town that has uh, poorly lit street lighting. So obviously I've already been you know, attempting to let them know at town council meetings that we should be redirecting some of our street improvement money that we were gonna do in this lighting project for this part of town over to that part of town. So even though it's a ward race, I'm still gonna focus on the town at large. Um, a lot of the other stuff that we, we believe in, obviously, you know, moving to more uh, 
sustainable means of, of commuting in town, more bike paths that are safer, safer roadways. Um, there's some uh, redevelopment. There's a big gas station that's been vacant for 15 years that everybody keeps, you know, harping on. And it's like a big eyesore in town. And I said, well, we need somebody that's going to work with the uh, county and the state and have the, the parks buy it back and have the park system absolve that because it's right next to the county park. And we can make that into parking for the park instead of having it as a, as a retail space. So there's a lot of stuff going on now, again, um, that I'm focusing on a little different this time. Still want to try to get grant money and they have some money for electric garbage trucks, big like future focused projects that you need somebody that's got that energy and that foresight to kind of go after and chase. We've hated our garbage uh, recycling companies that we've been dealing with here and have these contracts with. So if we can bring that in house somehow and do it the sustainable way, why not? They're throwing out millions of dollars of money. Let's go for it. That stuff, school buses, electric school buses, things like that. So I'm just trying to make it more of a approachable campaign as always. Um, and that's it. I just go door to door, go to everybody's house and I'm hoping everybody can still check out my campaign. You can find me at Cayetano number four council.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, answer any questions anytime and can help any other greens here that are thinking run for office too. Fantastic, Craig. Sounds really good. I'm um, doing a great job there. Yeah, I mean, the uh, issues like flooding are becoming more important. Um, I don't know if your town is near the ocean or near a river, but, you know, I'm on the shoreline in Connecticut and there's a big uh, Goldman Sachs funded project to expand the airport, which is low lying sea level and it's already in grasslands and, you know, with sea level rise. You know, they want to do all this, uh, bring in all this fill to try and raise it some, but it's still going to be prone to flooding and all that fill is going to push the floodwaters out into the surrounding towns, into the surrounding areas, into where people live and people are up in arms about it. But a lot of the local Democrats are all on board. They appointed my state rep to be um, the head of the airport authority. No experience in like running an airport. You know, he was just a local Democratic politician. Anyway, um, a lot of, so flooding is really a big issue and development and how it affects flooding. Hariashka, you have a question. Yes, I do. Thank you, Justin. And I, don't, I hope it's not a, a sensitive question, uh, uh, but I'm directing it to Craig and possibly Christina Khalil. Are y'all running as a slate? Oh, what's up with that? Maybe even Christina can. Yeah, sorry, my camera's not working, but that's the goal is to get an entire slate. We're gonna have our own line in the state of New Jersey so we could get a whole bunch of greens on both federal and state level elected. Fantastic. Do you, um, do you wanna speak next after Craig, Christina? Yeah, I'm open to that. Okay, any other questions for Craig? Great, thank you, Craig. And um, yeah, uh, encourage everyone to support you and all the other candidates um, you're interested in supporting today. Uh, Christina, why don't you go ahead? Um, I hope I'm not skipping anybody, but I just noticed you that that you're here and you're a candidate. Hello. Um, so I'm running for a federal election, United States Senate in 2024 against the incumbent. Bob Menendez, who's on his beautiful third federal trial. He is a Democrat. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So what I'm really fighting for is international rebuilding alliances, universal health care or Medicare for all, um, redesigning immigration and making sure we don't have a single homeless person in this in this entire country and uh, canceling student debt and free education for all, and then creating, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember everything off the top of my head, um, and creating equal education so it's not dependent on a person's zip code anymore. Fantastic. Um, have you run for office before and have you been involved with the New Jersey Green Party for a long time? So I was a Democrat and then when I presented everything to, to the Dems, um, they, they pushed me out pretty much and they were like, this is a progressive platform, but we're going to be supporting Menendez and his corruption, whatever. And then, so I was go actually going to drop out cause everyone else is dropping out and 
then the uh, Green Party reached out to me, and it turns out my entire campaign pretty much aligned with their beliefs and their core beliefs. So it was, uh, I guess this was fate. So I have the support, and I'm full throttle going in, and I'm learning. I'm ex- I've met so many people. I got into a pr- picnic with Greg, um, Craig. Um, so it was, everyone's been like nice, supportive, educational. I've spoken with Howie Hawkins. I think his name is, he's helping me actually put together a full proof plan for the, the Medicare slash universal healthcare for all where we can redirect the money. Um, and one of the ways I want to redirect the money. So taxes don't get raised is reducing investments in police and ending mass incarceration and the war on drugs would be going into uplifting every community. Yeah, these are green values you're talking about, and I'm happy that you have decided to run green. Um, You know, did you see the movie? Have you seen the Healing Us movie? Did you see it last night? Yeah, I saw it last night. It was amazing. I'm getting my own red beret. Fantastic. Fantastic. I think I want one too. Uh, Rachel, you have a question for Christina. Christina, could you um, briefly talk about um, your views on the military? Okay. Um, I want to reduce the budget in the military. That's where we're going to be also resupplying finances. And I also on a federal level, because of what's been happening in in, um, Texas, the fort, I can't remember the one where the woman was brutally murdered and raped. And then it keeps happening. There's um, a military base in Texas where there's a lot of murders, but it's not just there. It's all over. It's across the country and it's international where military soldiers are actually abusing, raping and harming other uh, both male and female um, soldiers. And they sweep them under the rug and they don't release any information. So giving voices to soldiers, military members and really making it a more unity and re instead of like for example we're supposed to go to war i think tomorrow and send troops to to niger because of all the international issues but we should be sending people to have discussions and war should be the last thing instead of the first response craig you want you want to go ahead and ask a question i was just going to follow up um so I'm so happy that I was able to connect with Christina through a few other greens that are in New Jersey. They're also newer greens and it kind of all has just been a a great movement in the last, what, Mm -hmm. month or two. It's been awesome. And obviously there's a lot of energy and support for the party nationally. And I'm glad that we're, we have some other candidates that are also filing for higher offices here too. And we're working on a national level to get everything squared away and straight, because I'll be honest with you, some people may not know the whole national situation. There was a little bit of a, 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 a vacuum of power. We had, uh, we had a, vaca- a vacation of a few seats in the SC earlier this year, and that caused a lot of reorganization to occur, and we've been doing it and dedicated to getting it through, and we have new committee assignments that we've been on. So I'm also involved with the PCSC and media, and there's a lot to work through there too. But uh, I hope everybody can just have a little, you know, faith and trust that we're going to get this going because I'm, trust me, if anybody knows me for like six something years now, I try to be as objective and fair and inclusive with everybody. I want everybody to have an opportunity to equally get their voice amplified and their message out there because all this does is make us a stronger party. I, I love having everybody run and I want primaries. I want every slate filled. So in New Jersey, we've got Christina's going to be there. She's in, she's already had our, our uh, basically our vetting process done last week. And, and she's our candidate. She's ready to go. She's getting her team ready now. And this is how important next year is. We're pivoting now in our state to build. We're also seeking 12 congressional candidates because we want to have everybody. We want this whole thing stacked without any question. In the last, I don't know if everybody's been keeping tabs on Jersey, the last three or four cycles we've had, everybody who's run, if it be Madeline Hoffman for Senate or governor or Diane Moxie for uh, Congress, we've finished ahead of the Libertarian Party. Even though the Libertarian Party still has technically more registered Greens in our state, uh, I think by about 10,000 now, which sucks. We're going to work on that next. Um, But we've finished ahead of them. We've gotten more exposure 
to them. And with somebody like Christine, it's already has a base and she's going to bring, she's going to bring a whole new energy to our state party. And I hope that's just going to, you know, amplify outwards. So the other states will start seeing it as we start communicating her campaign. And uh, we're hopefully going to have at least two or three congressional candidates approved and vetted by, I would say, by November, December. And if there's anybody has any general questions and stuff, I'd be more than happy to answer anytime. Over. Yeah, and we're working. We're having our first fundraising event. I was talking to Barry last night, um, September 9th. But in three to four months, we're putting together a huge, huge, huge fundraising event where I'm thinking we can raise between ten and twenty thousand dollars. And then I have a few more after that. But it's just like those two I'm working on right now. It sounds great. Um, Rachel, you have a follow up question. Thank you. Um, Christina, um, do you believe that uh, global warming is real and that it's man made? And if so, what solutions would you be pushing for? Okay, um, so global warming is a real issue and we have the, the climate green deal, but we can, instead of just saying we're part of the deal, we can start living that in the moment. So when we're building affordable housing, uh, houses, we can use green, green um, healthy ways that it's not going to hurt the environment to build these houses. So it's getting water cleaning. And I've talked to, I've spoken to some people and I have a meeting with um, the, the Nork Water Association in two weeks, I want to say, because I want to try and bring cleaner water, cleaner air, and um, a whole bunch of clean things on a national level. And how can we do this from instead of from the city or state level? How do we bring this across the country? So I have some ideas, and they're going to give me the the education on how to make those ideas um, real and what's the cost effective way we can do this. Because the goal is to not raise taxes, because everyone's taxes are getting raised. But I don't think. I think with all the money from that I'm going to redirect from the budget, mass incarceration, the drug war and police, I really don't think there's ever going to be a moment or anything that we're actually going to raise taxes. I, uh, yeah, I appreciate the question, Rachel. Uh, global warming, we've seen what a major issue it is. There's our, our keynote speaker at two o'clock, Peter Kalmus, will be discussing climate change. And then we on the environmental, I mean, the, on the Eco Action Committee have a workshop at 5.30 where I'll be speaking some about um, the solutions we need. We need to halt all production of new fossil fuel um, projects. And I believe we that we need a carbon tax and dividend. And I'm gonna be talking a lot about why we have to do that if we want to stop runaway climate change. So I encourage you to maybe come, Christina, we could talk more about that topic. Um, you said it's 5 p.m.? 5.30. 530. Oh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, Justin, starting yeah. here. Um, since there's no other uh, things happening in this Zoom call after the top of the hour, we can go a little bit later, actually as late as we want. Um, so okay. I know there are um, a few presidential candidates on and Jason Call. I just saw someone from Jill Stein's account came on. Uh, I don't know if that's Jill or Cornell, but anyway, um, let's um, let's try and get through those. And if we have to run late, we can do that. Oh, thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Christina. Um, thank you for running green. Thank you. Thank you for having me and letting me speak. OK, um, I'm looking for um, other candidates um, who maybe haven't spoken yet. We we did hear yesterday from Jasmine and Davi and Margaret, um, but we could hear from them again if there is no one else who hasn't spoken. Um, Jill Stein, are you there? Oh, sorry, Linda, do you have something to say? Yeah, I have a question to all the candidates. It seems to me, my experience, I've been in the party 20 years, and when local candidates run, they seem to focus on local issues and leave out the national issues. And I think that's a big mistake because it, for instance, the military budget makes it impossible for the federal government to fund state and local initiatives 
that are desperately needed. And the other thing is, even in the national campaigns that we've run, the candidates aren't speaking about having democratic elections and pointing out that we don't. Uh, even though we're attacked legally, um, we have to start explaining to the American people why the Green Party vote is so small. Like they abolished equal time provisions, we have to explain the whole ballot access procedure, and we can talk about it nationally, even if you're in one state that has fairly good um, ballot requirements, because it, it puts us at a disadvantage. And I don't think Americans understand that at all. And I think it ought to be a central upfront um, issue for every single campaign, local, state, or federal. That's it. Thank My you, Lindy. Yeah, I think whenever you are running green, it's a chance, well, whatever office you're running for, to talk about the two-party system and why it is problematic and that, and to describe to people that there are solutions and they include changing our electoral system from first past the post to uh, ranked choice voting, and they include better access, um, more of an even playing field when it comes to campaign finance, more of an even playing field when it comes to debates. Um, so good point. Jill, I want to let you go ahead. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm really not here in a, an official capacity, and I'm really just uh, in this webinar to support all the candidates and especially the local candidates who, local, state, congressional candidates who really are the engine, I think, for the and yes, presidential is really important, but so are our down ballot candidates. And I'm mainly just here to give a shout out and a big thank you to everyone who is, um, you know, who's who's part of that ginormous effort. Uh, I believe that Dr. West is going to stop by at the next uh, candidate cafe and uh, I will let him uh, speak for himself, of course. Um, and I, you know, I'm just here to give a big shout out for everybody and to underscore that you know this is really the perfect storm, and uh, people are really in political rebellion right now. And the more we get the word out, um, including at the local level, where we can really talk to people, where we can canvas, where we can, you know, show up at local events. That's really, you know, that's really where we build. Uh, the movement and we build the party. So I'm just really grateful to everybody who's doing all that work. Thank you so much. Here, here. Um, uh, well, it's uh, exciting that we might get to see, uh, you know, Cornell at the next cafe that's happening at uh, 6.45 Eastern time this evening. And um, uh, well, well, Let's we'd see. be allowed to speak again then because today you had changed the rules and the structure for this. So we didn't get to go and Davi didn't get to go. So will we all be allowed to speak when Dr. West is on? So it's fair. I understand um, we spoke yesterday. However, every day there are new people that were not at the cafes. Yes. Well, um, I if think, Justin. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, we're going to let everybody speak, but we're going to have local candidates first then federal candidates, and then presidential candidates. But like today, there wasn't a lot of local candidates to begin with, so that's why we had uh, some of the presidential candidates speak. Is that correct, how we're going to do the next one, Justin? Yeah, um, but, um, you know, we still have time left in today's cafe. Um, Jasmine, uh, if you, uh, is there, if there are no other local candidates or federal candidates, um, we could go ahead and let you speak again yes just uh jason call is a federal candidate um for congress uh yeah jason uh you spoke you also spoke yesterday did you want to also speak yesterday did you want to do you want did you want to go really quick um yeah i i don't mind going really quick again i think a lot of people were in the room yesterday but uh, my name is jason call i am running for house district two in um washington state uh running against uh, arguably the worst Democrat, although that's an extremely low bar here in Washington State. But uh, if you know uh, who Rick Larson is, he's uh, 
uh, fully funded by the war machine and the fossil fuel industry. I've been an anti-war activist for my entire adult life. Uh, Process is the first uh, Desert Storm War, the first Iraq War in uh, 1991, uh, when I was a freshman <coughs> sophomore at the University of Washington, um, and have continued anti-war activism my entire uh, life. Um, also on the board of Whole Washington, uh, reiterate if you have not seen the Healing Us movie, um, I uh, make an appearance a few times because uh, I was at a lot of those events. I've actually got my green beret right here. Um, that one of our uh, local Red Berets, and I, I was actually a founding member of the Red Berets uh, back in 2018, um, and keep in touch with that group um, regularly, and um, uh, on the board of Whole Washington as we try and push for a single payer system here in Washington State. Hopefully, we'll uh, spur something at the federal level uh, since our, our Congress is completely failing on the health care issue in this country. Um, so uh, I, I appreciate what Linda said about national issues. Um, as a federal candidate, uh, I am running on national is issues, uh, supportive of Medicare for all, uh, single payer health uh, insurance. Uh, I would actually prefer something more akin to the NHS, <laughs> where where the hospital associations and all the doctors are all employed by the federal government. Um, rather than, than private institutions, uh, but uh, certainly we'll take a, a government-funded insurance plan for everybody uh, in, in the absence of that. Um, uh, certainly cutting the military budget. Um, I have long been an advocate of, of uh, reducing our military presence globally. Uh, we see again what's happening in, in Niger. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't take much for the United States to decide it's going to mobilize um, and spend our resources um, halfway across the world. So um, other issues, uh, the, I, I would say the climate crisis is my top issue right now. Um, in the last two cycles that I have run, because this is my, my third run for the seat, uh, first is the Green, and, and thank you so much for the Green Party for um, uh, uh, supporting me. Uh, but we got 30,000 votes plus um, in, in both of the prior elections, and uh, certainly hoping to keep those voters. And as a Green candidate, as a leftist candidate, um, you know, focusing on turning out the youth. Uh, we had abysmal youth turnout in the primary in both of the last cycles. Uh, and if we cannot inspire young people to show up and vote, uh, we are we're not going to make it through this election either. Um, uh, so in climate crisis issues, uh, I have a very coastal district here on the Puget Sound. We've probably got more coastline here than 95% uh, uh, of the other districts in the country um, and certainly stand to be impacted by rising tides. But we also have massive opportunities here uh, on the ring of fire for uh, geothermal energy um, production, uh, wind production, solar production, um, tidal production of, of energies, whatever we can do to get off of fossil fuels and to have our energy needs met by sustainable and renewable energy is what we need to do. Um, I'm running against a guy who less than a year after Deepwater Horizon uh, started pushing for more drilling in the Gulf. So that tells you where his mind is at. And if you look at his um, records, I, I would really encourage, and I will put this into uh, the chat here, but if you really want to deep dive on a a, somebody who is representing you who is fully bought off by the worst of the industries. Um, I've got my campaign has done the deepest dive that I think anybody has done on any federal candidate, Republican or Democrat, um, at Rick's receipts on my website, callforcongress.com. I really encourage people to look at that and use that as a model for exposing their federal representatives because all the information is there. It's in the congressional record, it's in the FEC filings. All you got to do is go look. Of course, we used Open Secrets as a source as well, um, but I don't think that there is enough out there in the public to say, hey, look, the people who are representing you are not good people. They are bought off by industry and they are not, I mean, the evidence is there. They are not serving your best interests and we have to do something about that if we're going to have a sustainable uh, and livable future for our children. I say that as a parent, my kids are 17 and 20 right now. I don't know what the future is going to be for them, um, but but we've got to do something immediately um, to get off of fossil fuels. So um, that's that's it for me. I won't say any anything more other than that. This is a viable race. We really have an opportunity in my race. If I get 
uh, second place in the primary because I don't expect to get first place. I mean, Rick Larson will get first place. Um, he always does. But if I can get second place um, and I come a close second two times in a row, I think I can beat Rick. This is an ostensibly progressive district. And if the Democrats in this, in this district realize they've got me on one hand who stands for all the things that the Democratic Party and, and I say this as somebody who was on the Democratic Central Committee in Washington State for four years, um, I, I got elected as a as Bernie Sanders supporter, helped rewrite the state platform. Um, the truth is, Democratic voters, for the most part, support the things that the Green Party um, uh, supports. They are just trapped. They are trapped in this duopoly mindset that we have been propagandized um, uh, for our entire lives to think this is the only way things can happen. But my district really is a viable race for us to break free of that mindset. If I can get second place on the primary, uh, after the primary or through the primary, I can beat Rick Larson in the general. I'm really confident of it. So thank you so much. I'm going to put my information in the chat. Happy to take uh, any, any questions. Fantastic. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Jasmine in the chat asks if, if you need uh, volunteers. I assume you're open to volunteers. We'll always take volunteers. We're actually spending most of uh, this uh, quarter through the end of September doing as much fundraising as we can um, so that we can pay our local staff. Right now we are working on volunteers. I have a couple of lightly paid staff, um, but we want to make sure that we have people putting in hours for us that they are getting compensated. Uh, and that we have the funding to um, do all do all of our printing needs. Obviously, all union printed. We have a good local print shop, but that stuff costs money. Um, and and you know, I hate to say it, uh, a lot of people have this fanciful idea that you can run a no money campaign. You can't. <laughs> so please please donate what you can. Great, thanks, uh, Rachel. You have a question for Jason. Jason, can you tell us your website? address please. Um, I'm about to put that in the chat. Yes. Uh, callforcongress.com and all of my socials are call for Congress also. Um, it, except my TikTok, which is has a WAO2 at the end. But if you type in call for Congress, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, um, all of my feeds will come up. Thank Great. you. Jason, where is your, are you in the Seattle, S Seattle Metro? No, I am north of Seattle. I am one district north of Pramila Jayapal. Uh, my district starts um, at, at the Snohomish King County line. So King County is where Seattle is. Uh, you go one county north, that's where my district starts. And I go all the way up to the Canadian border and include the islands in the North Puget Sound. If you know Whidbey Island and the San Juan Islands, those are in my district. Two naval bases here, by the way, too. Very good. Um... I'll take uh, another question from Hariaksha, and then I want Jasmine and Davi, I'm going to let you guys go again because we have extra time. Hariaksha. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Jason, another question. You just mentioned uh, Pramila, and uh, I think she's usually identified with Medicare for All. Are you in some kind of unity uh, conversation? Not, a, not at all. Uh, I, honestly, the progressive, the progressive Caucus is a disaster. I've been calling them out for four years, over half of the Progressive Caucus are decidedly not progressive. In fact, I could count on both hands the number of people in that caucus that I would consider actually progressive. Uh, and I said running as a Democrat in the last two cycles, I would not join the Progressive Caucus. I would stand to the left of the Progressive Caucus and invite people like AOC and Rashida Tlaib and Cori Bush, uh, who, I, who I love. I love Cori and Rashida. I, I have some issues with AOC, but I love Cori and Rashida. I would invite them to come stand with me in the actually progressive caucus. Um, the progressive caucus, pardon my French, is a shit show. Um, <laughs> and, and you you look in that, they have crossover membership with the New Democrats. Um, I talked uh, yesterday about the New Democrats. They are des decidedly anti-progressive caucus, and it is an absolute travesty to allow any members of the New Democrats inside the progressive caucus. New Democrats uh, got their start from Koch brother money. Um, so I'm extremely disappointed with Pramila Jayapal. And no, she will she would not endorse me or have anything to do with me. So that's fine. It's become a meaningless title to be in the Progressive Caucus. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to follow up. Uh, is there some word we can displace that with? Because that's become sort of a dirty word these days. The label progressive. 
I still use it. You know, I think labels are important. Um, and, and I still use progressive, but, but I say progressive as it actually should be, you know, progressive means moving forward. It doesn't mean acquiescing to the status quo. Hopefully we'll have a green caucus soon. Um, uh, all right. So, um, uh, uh, and, uh, I'm sorry, but, um, so I'm sorry, Jasmine, Jasmine, uh, suggested that Davi might want to go first. We're going to go over time because we can Davi, if you could, uh, yeah, keep it, uh, limited, uh, in time the way everyone else has done, you know, maybe about five minutes at the most. Davi, there you are. Greetings, everybody. Hello. Um, my name is Davi. I am a music artist, tech founder, and American presidential candidate 2024. Um, before I get going, I just want to um, acknowledge Jill Stein. Um, this is the first time I've been on a video call with somebody I voted for president for. So it's really an honor to uh, share this moment with you. Um, I, uh, for those who were here yesterday, I'm going to do the same thing, essentially, um, invite everybody to my website. Um, so, Starling, if you could um, uh, make me a host, I could share. Um, and, um, and then after that, I'm going to uh, invite you to listen to the new national anthem that I've created. I'm submitting to the American public. Um, and then I'll take a few questions. Um, I just want to point out that I had seven minutes. Um, it's on YouTube. I had seven minutes yesterday. The other presidential candidates had 12. So I'm not the one who takes up a lot of time. All right. So Sorry I'm going to share here. Um, it's, Justin, is that okay? Yeah. Do the yeah. screen. Okay. Hold on a minute, Dobby. Let me. Uh, okay. You should be able to screen share now. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, so welcome to Davi.com. So uh, greetings to my fellow human. I am Davi, artist, tech founder, and avatar of earth. In 2020, I vowed to ensure the sacred protection, harmony, and natural evolution of humanity and earth. I'm running to earn your vote in 2024 as president of America and leader of the free world. My areas of focus are rehabilitation and recycling, providing healing oriented support for those ailing in body, mind, and or behavior, finding harmony and balance between usage and contribution to earth. Part two, the American Refresh, a four year transition where through pace collective voting, Americans vote for the exact government we want moving forward, intentionally managing the growth of technology. Part three, mediator wing of the police, an emergency mediator wing of the police that on demand mediates tough situations and conversations without guns, batons, or slow court dates. So here you can read the full campaign plan. I invite you to slide down and have your, have your time. Most importantly, I want you to go to the music tab and listen to the 2024 National Anthem. I'll play it here in the background. You can um, go to uh, buy.be.com slash music to hear it. And I'll open it up to questions. Thank you, Davi. I like the mediator wing of the police idea because that's a serious problem that um, the police don't often know how to respond with uh, in a in a in a way that is educated by social sciences and um, and psychology and um, you know they often only have force as their only tool. Um, so, uh, any questions for Davi? Yeah, I have one. Go ahead, Linda. Yeah, um, the, I think when you look at the uh, old 10 point program with the Black Panther Party, it's just about everything that I wish that the Green Party could um, adopt. And it, one of the planks on the police was community review boards. And I, I, I'm not hearing that too much in the Green Party and I'd like to know what you think about it. I think it's it's the demand that we ought to be focusing on because it puts 
control of the police in the hands of the community, and it should be a democratically elected uh, control board. So I'd just like you to respond to that and the other candidates as well. I, have, I haven't heard much talk about it. <laughs> great. Thank you, Linda. Um, it's a very great idea. Um, <laughs> so the police right now, you know, they kind of have a one size fits all, you know, experience, right? So um, you call and they show up with their guns and handcuffs and somebody might get arrested, right? Um, the, there's, a, there's a front end that can be changed, which is the mediator wing, which is three counselors come and they say, hey, do you want this to be a mediator um, experience or do you want this to be a criminal um, court case? And they can sit down with those people, deal with the issue right on hand. We are an American melting pot. We have different cultures, different ways of being. We need a, a wing that deals with that immediately and quickly so people can move on from hard times in their lives. Um, I think a community review board would be awesome as well in this plan where the police themselves, even though they're still gonna be taking care of the more emergency side of the you know, public um, uh, issues, um, having a community review board that looks at them and says, hey, how, just, even though your workload is less, what are you doing? How, is, how are you being uh, responsible to what we want as a community? So thank you for your, for your um, insight. Thank you, thank you Davi. Uh, Margaret, you have a question. Uh, yeah, thank you, Justin. Thank you, Davi, for being on today and answering some questions and, and uh, explaining your platform. Could you talk a little bit about your position on uh, queer rights, specifically tra trans rights, in light of the fact that there are over 535 bills pending in state legislatures across the country seeking to criminalize uh, being queer in some manner? Thank you. Um, all right, uh, I can't share anymore, but there, um, the core of my campaign uh, is called Earth Order. Earth Order is an agreement to equality amongst humanity. So right now we have this really interesting time period where those of us with eligibility um, have been isolated and uh, reorganized, right, um, by names and by labels. But the only name that the American government should be relating to us as is American human. And if that is disrupted, then the government themselves is liable for creating discrimination. So this is uh, a, a moment for us to really reevaluate where we are, what we're, what role our government is allowing, to, what, what role we're allowing the government to play in our lives, um, and and take charge of the fact that there is simply human rights. <laughs> we are human. And if you are dis disrupting my movement or my choices that are not harming anyone else, then you are in, um, you're, you're in the wrong. And we have to be able to you know, discern between right and wrong and move forward. So thank you, thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Davi. Um, any other questions for Davi? Um, yes, I have a question. Yes. Robin. Um, hi, Davi, if you were nominated, would you, and I, I kind of throw this out to all the, all the candidates, you can put it in the chat. Would you be willing to support your down ballot candidates and run with them? Oh, absolutely. And me? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's that's uh, that's a no brainer to me. Uh, I think, you know, I said this yesterday, but the red and the blue are the most vulnerable right now. They are shaking in their boots because of the Green Party. I think we, this is the opportunity for us to really stand in our power and say, wow, 38 years, you know, we've been fighting this fight. And this is the moment when the blue is not even running a primary season. So that means the American public is excited to be able to have a different type of conversation should we allow ourselves to take up that space. So this is a time for us to not think of everything that's happened in the past because circumstances have caused those things, right? But this is the circumstance where the American public is naturally looking for us to uh, be present and have a good option. You're here, uh, Hari Thank Aksha. you, Gabby. Thank you. Hari Aksha. Yes. Thanks. This is uh, directed to Davi, 
Jasmine, Randy, are there any other presidential uh, uh, aspirants here on this call? Uh, at least y'all, you three, uh, please, I uh, beg you to take Jill Stein's example and name a shadow cabinet. That way we know what kind of uh, advice you're getting, who your inner circle is or, or would be. A shadow cabinet, you know, your cabinet members, stuff like that. Thanks. Um, yeah, would um, anyone like to respond to that, the candidates? Randy here. Yeah, so I am co-chair Green Party of Florida. I was reelected with 61.9% of the vote a couple of weeks ago. And there's a lot of West supporters in, in, in Florida as well. So it should be a really interesting primary. Um, so there'll be some solidarity. There will be some pretty tough debates. I'm going to hold West's feet to the fire on the Green Party platform, which I've been working on for 40 years now kind of a dream come true i feel young i've got a 15 year old a 17 year old a 22 year old all in school and so i don't feel like an old person this is all really exciting times for the green party told her out thank you randy uh any anyone else want to respond to Hariaksha's question about a cabinet oh um i just have a question for davi okay christina go ahead what are your thoughts on reparations? Because um, I'm only coming this from a social work point of view and a therapist point of view and just working within um, the communities. And when people say that we shouldn't have labels, they tend to not have a reparation point of view and they tend to dismiss the, the marginalized communities and the minorities that have been suffering. And I just, I'm curious to hear your viewpoints on that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I feel like this is a not public conversation, but what I will say is this, my, my value is not dictated by somebody's printed money. So that's it. Thank you, Davi. Thank you. Uh, Margaret, Margaret, you have a question? Um, yes, I do. Actually, thank you. Uh, it was about the, well, I guess the statement about the shadow cabinet. Uh, I think that's a great idea, uh, Harry Aksha. I know that we used to have them here in the party previously, and I think it does provide the exact sort of thing you're, you're thinking about. Like, what would a green government actually look like? Some policy happens. What would the green position be to that same thing? And we should issue those statements as well. This is how we really demonstrate what we would really present as alternatives to the duopoly when they actually go out and do stuff. It's fine for our candidates to say, oh, we would do this or we would do that. But having a whole cabinet there demonstrates like this broader coalition of perspectives. And I think it lends a lot of legitimacy to the green view about how to tackle issues across the world. Wonderful. I think that's a great idea, especially after a nomination. Uh, Christina, you have your still have your hand up. Did you have a follow up question? Uh, no, I'm trying to turn my hand down. Give, give okay. me a second. All right, Greg. I just wanted to say I've up. been putting my responses in the comments um, to try to take up less space on the main stage, but I have been answering questions that I've asked in line in the chat. Okay, and you want to go next, Jasmine? I I, I know that we've now given Davi more than. 10 minutes it's been more like 15 and um yes thank you everybody appreciate it uh but craig if you could be quick i'd like to give jasmine a little time too of course very quick so i, I love the idea of calling a, a shadow cabinet i would love for us to find a different word for it <laughs> something a little more approachable marketable but it'd be great to see the presidential candidates come up with their own version of their cabinet and uh honestly maybe three to five executive orders that they would do on day one, because the whole point of being elected president is you're, you have the immediate executive order. We would want to see somebody on day one sign certain things. So I think like three to five that you guys and candidates overall could come up with would be also a great way to highlight your campaigns and promote them to the uh, national body. Over. Thank you, Craig. And, uh, Jack Baldwin in the chat suggests alternative cabinet. That might be a good term. Um, so, um, um, Jasmine, I think, um, would you like to go ahead and speak um, a bit about your campaign? 
Sure. My name is Jasmine Sherman. I am already on the ballot in seven other states with the Unicorn Party. I have completed my application to seek the nomination from the Green Party. The only portion that I'm missing is collecting the 100 signatures, which you guys have seen me repeatedly networking and asking for. My platform is guaranteed housing. No more rent, no more mortgage. Everyone in this country deserves to have house, like a place to live. We see that we have entered into our boiling era, and it is imperative that we treat people with basic human dignity, which means housing. In turn, we also need to provide everyone with health care. My universal health care plan expands Medicare to include dental and vision and all prescriptions, including holistic care. Everything that I'm talking about, you can read on my website, and it is got, there is an audiobook option for people that are busy or people who have disabilities and aren't able to read it themselves. I would also point out that at this time, we need education to be free. As AI is a part of the everyday norm, we have to be able to give people opportunities to go back to school to stay up to date with the latest technologies. And that, not, that is not just to be someone in a white collar position. We need to make sure we have more plumbers, more bricklayers. Like we see right now in this country, how we have treated immigrants and we see how we have treated our regular blue collar workers. We don't have any support systems for them, which is why a part of my platform includes universal basic income. Every policy on my website is going to be converted into an executive order. The goal is to go ahead and overwhelm the courts. Go ahead and understand that the Senate and the Congress are not going to be working with a third party candidate when we are elected and we should take the FDR approach. If you have more questions, you can schedule time with me or my staff um, on my website. There is an opportunity if you are someone that has social media presence and you'd like to conduct an interview. If you are a journalist, there is an option for you as well. If you are a regular citizen, you have an option as well. We have to stop being the party of almost and go ahead and be the party of we can. The goal this election, we are in that sweet spot. We have never had such a tumultuous time. We have never had such vocal dissent from the masses, and we have never had access to our public, to our youth, like never before. It is time that we cater to the younger generation as they have shown in the last polling to be the more prevalent voting bloc. Um, is there any questions about me or my policies? Thank you, Jasmine. Yes, any questions for Jasmine? I see in the chat, Sandy asks, has, has any of the candidates for president run for office in the past? Davi said, yes, he's ran for mayor of, of New York City. Jasmine, have you run for I am, office? The question was, have you run for president? I am 37 years old. This is the first opportunity for me to run for president, and I'm doing it as soon as I became of age to do so. I would like to remind people that the barrier entry that we have about running for president the people back in 1776, those people were not in their 70s or 80s. They were in their 30s and 40s. This generation needs this, this desire to prolong the legacies of the past is beautiful, but we have to think about the future and the future is younger and the future requires people that are younger for the technology and the work that we need to do. No disrespect to anybody that's older, but one of my executive orders would be an age cap of 65 followed by a term limits plan. Any other questions for Jasmine? Excuse me. Jill. Right, um, I saw Jill's hand go up first, Randy, and then we'll go to you. Yeah, just quickly, um, Jasmine, um, thank you for, for running. Um, can you tell us something about the Unicorn Party? And in particular, how is that different from the Green Party? So the Unicorn Party was the first political party that we created. Um, we got together with a bunch of people from TikTok and the younger generation and they created their own political party. It started in 2021. 20, uh, Legally, that was what we needed to get the ball rolling and to get on the ballots. We decided that we wanted to build a coalition and that's why I'm here. I did see that people said, if I cannot receive the Green Party's now, uh, nomination, will I be running for local office as a Green? No, I'm running for president of the United States. I don't have ambitions to run for local office. I have seen the whole trickle down office thing and it hasn't worked. We need to have a presidential candidate that's going to operate to break these ties, right? Because the ratchet effect is hurting us. I have not run um, to do this before. This is the first time and we are doing it with a youth based team. Uh, most of the youngest people, we've had 10 year olds volunteer all the way up until um, 
people who are in their 80s, but it is a more youthful uh, political party. Thank you, Jasmine. There's another question in the chat. Do, do you call your from Jack Baldwin? Do you call yourself socialist or are you sympathetic to socialism, even if you don't use that label? Sorry, nope, Randy, I am. I am a socialist. I use the vein of I'm Jasmine Sherman and I practice pan African socialism. The village eats, the village sleeps, the village lives. That is the like, there's no shame in wanting to make sure that everyone's basic human needs are right. And I hope that through this campaign, a lot of people who have misgivings about certain labels or words will learn that it doesn't matter what we call ourselves as long as everyone has a place to sleep and food to eat when they get there. Socialism isn't bad. It's not a boogeyman. It's not going to hurt you. It's just a person that understands that we have to provide for the entire human and that includes having an environment worth living in and a quality of life that everyone would be comfortable with on their worst day. I'm a proud socialist. You're here. Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, Randy, I, I skipped over you. Go ahead and ask a question. You had a question? Well, no, I, I, Sandy just asked about running for office, who, what, what, are, you know, what we had done. And I had mentioned earlier, I just wanted to recap. Ran for mayor of Aurora in Illinois, second largest city twice. Ran for Congress um, in Orange County, San Diego County District. Got 20% of the vote back in the early 80s. And then most recently for school board. And our school board has almost a $3 billion budget. Think about that, the waste involved in that. That is just mind boggling. Largest employer in the county. Um, I mean, Hillsborough County is bigger than some states, more population than some states. And we held on, the Green Party got in, in the media a lot because they referred to me as founder of the Green Party. Likewise with the other events as well in, in Aurora as well. So that's where I wanna really play a role here Cornell West is really great at getting publicity, but I think I can um, go head to head with him when we go on CNN with a good debate. Toller out. Thank you, Randy. Um, are there any other uh, candidates that I've missed or any other questions for the candidates who have spoken today? Greg. I'll ask an important question. So uh, Randy, with what's going on in the presidential primary, how are you going to oversee a fair and open primary process in Florida with candidates like Davi and Jasmine, uh, Cornell, and yourself? Great question. And so Laura Potts, I think she's on this call, is the co-chair. And uh, Kathy Gilbert, and we have some very neutral players in, in the Florida Green Party that are, are, this is what this is all about. We just don't want this to be a coronation for West. You know, this is kind of where the, the Florida Green Party is speaking up a little bit nationally about this. So yes, we will look at the processes. I can't give you any guarantees about a, a debate we might be handling with our state um, you know, organization, what, what we might be doing there, but it might be possible other states will also be doing that. I think Connecticut and some other states are, have talked about that as well. So uh, it should be a really interesting 2024. You know, Trump is gonna be running to stay out of jail. I mean, how weird is that? Thank you, Randy. Um, any other questions for any of our candidates or any other candidates who wanted to speak and we didn't get to speak? Yeah, Linda. Linda. Yeah, um, I, I wanna know how the, uh, all the candidates can respond, how they're going to respond to issues of health and um, Medicare, because I don't think the American population has any idea that even though Biden got up in his annual address to the nation, said that they would never attack Medicare, and the Republicans said that too, and yet there is this insidious campaign going on to privatize Medicare to the extent that for, I, I understand 40% of people have gotten out of Medicare to go on into private plans. And I think what they're going to do is try to get everybody out of the Medicare government program into a private plan, and then they're gonna screw everybody. They're making these plans sound attractive right now, but it's the biggest scam that the, and it's a bipartisan scam. And, um, I think we've got to hit it hard and make it a central issue. The other thing is all the plethora of uh, COVID issues, long COVID, 
all the disability issues of these nonspecific illnesses like chronic fatigue and so on that are environmentally caused, in my opinion, a lot of them, and they're devastating people's lives, but they aren't acknowledged and they aren't reimbursed and they aren't uh, compensated. So um, that's a big working class issue and I think we've got to take it up. So I'd just like to hear the response of how the candidates are going to handle the, these issues. Um, Jason, you have your hand raised. Would you like to speak as a candidate to that? Yeah, um, well, I, what what Linda is saying is absolutely correct. Uh, first of all, Joe Biden has said he would uh, veto Medicare for all, which I think should be horrific. It should be abhorrent to all Democrats. The fact that the Democratic Party is cheerleading him so much after he said that statement, uh, you know, it's confusing, um, but it shows you how cult-like the mentality within the Democratic Party can be. Um, I want to say, you know, uh, I think he pulled off the ACO reach, uh, but about a year ago, as I was campaigning, I had seniors in my district saying, what are you going to do about ACO reach? Um, and I think there was enough public outcry, and this was something that I will say about Pramila and a number of Democrats. Um, they wrote a strongly worded letter because that's about all they, they do. Um, and they did harshly criticize the ACO reach plan. And I think Biden has backed off on that. But there is no doubt that the leadership of the Democratic Party wants to fully privatize Medicare. Now, the one thing I'm going to do here to, to say this is something that everybody should know. The Tories in the UK um, did uh, privatization of the NHS. They have done some elements of privatization of the NHS, and it has been absolutely disastrous for healthcare in the UK. The Lancet, which is a well-respected journal, did a study of the Tory privatization of Medicare from 2013 to 2020, and they showed a definitive correlation. Now, correlation is not causation. We all know that, but a definitive cor correlation between increased privatization of healthcare services and increased preventable mortality. And I think we could shut down any talks of privatizing our healthcare services, particularly Medicare, if we simply said, look at what happened in the UK. They privatized Medicare, they privatized the NHS and more people died. That is simply the way it goes. Um, so um, I also want to reference uh, uh, part of the Healing Us movie. If you look at Dr. Joe Jarvis, who is a free market guy, and he says quite clearly, I'm a free market guy, but the free market does not belong in healthcare. And he does about a three minute segment in Healing Us. And I think everybody should watch that. And I'm trying to get the, uh, the uh, director, Kenny Ballantyne, to clip that part out for me and let me share that part of the movie. If people could watch those three minutes about why privatization of healthcare works the argument is over we need to have medicare for all it needs to be government funded accessible for everybody so um i'm going to drop that lancet link in the chat right now yeah. thank you thank you jason yeah the you know the medicare advantage is a privatization scheme the aco reach is a, a scheme to privatize what's left of medicare and i don't believe it's completely stopped i think they're still continuing it continuing it although I could be wrong. I think they put limits on it, but it's continuing as a it is pilot continuing, program. Yes. Yeah, um, I'm going to go in the order the hands are raised. Uh, Jill. Um, OK, yeah, I'm on uh, just just briefly, since ballot access, you know, is going to really determine whether we are a real campaign or, you know, regardless it's of candidate. Sorry, I don't know if somebody said something, but my um, my concern is just like, we got to get on the ballot and we should be a 50 state campaign because there is widespread political rebellion going on right now. You know, you can look at any of the polls. People really know that they have been thrown under the bus by the parties of war in Wall Street. And, you know, more twice as many people identify as not belonging to Democrats and Republicans as belong to either Democrats or Republicans. You know, you can look at any of innumerable statistics. People are in really active rebellion now on all the issues, you know, demanding housing. 40% of people are economically uh, stressed, uh, seriously stressed 
uh, who rent right now, you know, rent is just through the roof and the numbers are doubling even uh, on an annual basis in terms of what, what people are playing, paying, whether you're looking at healthcare or housing or education or, you know, the absolute um, uh, collapse of the climate, you know, before our very eyes and the Colorado River is about to run dry, which supplies half the fruit and vegetables, you know, for the entire country. So we are in a state of emergency. People are connecting the dots. We really need to be on the ballot so that whoever our candidate is, is a real candidate that can really challenge power. So my question to all the candidates is, how are you supporting ballot access? And I also want to put in a good word for the, um, the ballot access training uh, that will go on Sunday, uh, sponsored by the party's uh, ballot access committee. I can't stress enough, having been a candidate twice, that having a really strong ballot access campaign that hits the ground running in every state that needs ballot access, which is most of the states now, we have about, I think, 18 ballot lines currently. Um, I, I'd love to hear from every candidate how you are going to support uh, the ballot access drive, because it matters for every one of us, whoever our candidate's going to be. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Uh, Jasmine, uh, uh, you're next in the queue with the hands, and so maybe you'd like to respond to that? Sure. Um, so the way that my staff and I've been handling ballot access, like I said, we did create the unicorn party for the low hanging fruit states like Louisiana, right? It was only $500 to get their ballot access. Mm -hmm. What we have been doing is treating every state as a, please note this idea is for everybody. So if you want to use it, please use it. But we've been doing targeted micro advertising. So we're not campaigning to a whole state when the government only requires us to get a thousand signatures or 2,500 signatures. What we've been doing is deploying Gen Z and using memes and collecting our signatures that way or meme parties. And that's how we've been able to accrue so many thanks to the help of TikTok. And so really what it is, is as secretaries of states um, have loosened some of the rules because they are expecting or were expecting Donald Trump to run as an independent. It has been a lot easier in some of those red states. And so a lot of the states, um, their ballot access still isn't open. The candidate portals are not open yet. So we haven't been able to strategize for those states. But as they open up and our um, notifications come in, we just turn Gen Z on them with different organizing strategies. And there is no idea that is the wrong idea. We've had more success by doing things at strip clubs, at bars, where real people are going to lunches at their offices. You know things like that, feeding the houses, working with the community. That's how we've been able to get ballot access by being on the ground, doing what the micro community needs. Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, Davi, do you wanna respond to that question or, or make another comment? Davi? Hey, hey. Um, so on uh, Medicare first, uh, so uh, my, uh, my plan is we're, we're in a time of essentially GMO, non-organic versus organic. And so you go to the grocery store, you can buy 90% of the grocery store. Most stores have uh, natural flavors in it. So it makes it not eligible for, G for, for organic produce. So basically what you're eating is foodstuffs, right? And so they're giving us foodstuff in our food. They're giving us foodstuff in our doctors and the symptoms and their, their recommendations for us, right? And then there's this homeopathic stuff, right? That our medicine actually is based off of, but they moved away from because they couldn't uh, put a number to it, couldn't, couldn't capitalize upon that. So they had to simmer it down and concentrate it and put it into pills. But the same stuff is available in an organic form. So my plan basically offers you know, if you if you enjoy, you know, the, the GMO doctor hospital experience, you can keep that. But every hospital will also have to have a, a wing that's dedicated to organic healing, making sure people get enough sun, making sure people get in proper food, making sure people have um, healing for traumas that they've had in their lives. So I'm not interested in, in changing or trying to fix science. I am interested in, in allowing us to reintegrate with what's naturally available in this earth for us. Uh, second, ballot access. Um, I think it is very, very, very imperative 
that the Green Party get organized. Um, if the Green Party itself, as, as you saw yesterday, if the Green Party itself is fighting against me or any other candidate, then that is a reflection of the disorganization. However, if the candidates ourselves, if we actually come together and begin to uh, basically just create a coalition, I mean, we, we have an entire year to be a coalition of the representative of this party. Yes, we are competing for the nomination, but at the end of the day, what we're really doing is bringing to the American public a new option. Here's a new party that can offer a good option, whether it's for either one of us. It's a good option because it respects humanity. None of these parties respect humanity. None of these parties respect uh, the, the basic tenets of life, right? People are starving for us. We have to take advantage of that by getting organized and stop fighting with each other and really come together as a coalition and do something extraordinary. So I invite, my, my, my website is buy.v.com. You can find my contact information there. I really in, in, it would like to uh, speak with the uh, candidates themselves um, to really create this coalition. And anybody else, please uh, visit the volunteer tab of my website as well. All right. Thank Have you, Doc. Could I ask a, a follow-up question on this topic? And there were some questions in the chat about it as well. To the presidential candidates, uh, what are your feelings or thoughts about if you if you were to not uh, win the nomination, would you be supporting the nominee of the Green Party for president? Dobby, I'll let you go first since you were just kind of talking about that. I'm continuing as a writing candidate regardless of the nomination. Um, other candidates, Jasmine, uh, Randy. I'm confident that the Green Party won't make the wrong mistake, and that's not going to be a bridge we have to cross. But I do not plan to withdraw from my race. Uh, Randy. You muted. Jill, do you know if uh, Cornell has a position on that? If you um, were to lose the nomination? I don't know. And I think every candidate should be asked that question. R Randy, I'm off of mute here. Please excuse the weather in the background here. Um, I'm not sweating like Nixon because I'm nervous. <laughs> it's 110 heat index. So in answer to your question, Jill, I'm on the ballot access committee um, and intend to really focus on that because you you know what this is all about. You ran twice. How we ran, it was all about ballot access that drove everything, all your decisions, all your resource deployments. And it's it's tricky. Things come up and you have to pay attention to a, like a lot of different things. So it's very, very important if we really want to do this in 50 states. Absolutely. So as far as a couple other... Uh, things that were brought up, Medicaid. Yeah, I mean, my disabled son, I'm gonna fight hard on that, my 15 year old. You know, I'm right up there. I'm gonna be right up in the face of the media about this. It's really a horrible situation, what's going on. Jill, I've talked to you about this, actually about his uh, autism and, and, and the vaccines. I don't wanna get into that right now because that's kind of a touchy one, but you know, it's really important that we, we bring that center stage. And the last one I think we're really missing here, my friends, is inflation, okay? That's really, really a, a game changer for, for the Green Party because the middle class is being eaten alive like a great white shark by inflation. And I think it's important with our banking system. I do think the banking system discriminates against the Midwest and the South. Uh, we have some issues with, I think, the coastal elites and the Democratic Party controlling things. So I have a real concern about that, but um, hopefully I address those uh, questions that you guys were asking about. Um, and Randy, yeah, the question was, uh, would you support the Green Party nominee if you were not to win the nomination? Not only would I support the nominee, I would just work actively and use my media experience to really um, boomerang that that uh, campaign. I mean, this is we're about ready to make history here. I want to be part of it. Thank you. Uh, Tom, go ahead. Yeah, question for all the uh, presidential candidates. What are you doing today? for ballot access. Do you have people on the ground working on ballot access in New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, 
wherever the states may be. I mean, what, what are y'all doing today? Not what you're going to do next year if you get the nomination. What are you doing today to get that ballot access? Are you raising the money? Are you hiring people to get that ballot access that we all need? Uh, Jasmine, you have your hand raised. Why don't you go, go ahead. ahead? Jasmine? I was going to say, so my staff is actively working to secure ballot access. We are actively on the road. I was supposed to be in New York this weekend, but I stayed home to participate in this convention. Um, we are actively already on the road getting ballot access. We are already fundraising. Like I said yesterday, uh, my staff, have, we have our campaign bus. On that bus, we are selling food um, to raise the $100,000 to get the $100,000 match because it is only $300,000 to get on all 50 states ballots. So we are approaching it that way. Um, in the meantime, we are building community. We are feeding the houseless in every place we go. And that is how we've been able to find people that are easier, willing to work with us and on our behalf while we leave the state. So we are actively campaigning right now. Yeah, but Jasmine, are you can't, are you trying to get the Green Party on the ballot or the Unicorn Party on the ballot? The Green Party has not given me the nomination to act on their behalf yet. So I am working on the Unicorn Party's ballot access because they've given well, me that the does, Fine, we understand that. If you don't get- No, no, but you, you're, you, a, you, you asked, you're not a Green hold Party second, person. Hold on one second, sir. You asked me a question and it would be unfortunate for me to lie. The Green Party has not given me their nomination. And it is unfair to seek the labor of people without them having gotten anything for it, right? So the way we end this kind of behavior is to be transparent. And so I'm telling you, as soon as I have the Green Party's nomination, most definitely they will be my forefront focus. But as a marginalized member of the community, my labor is valuable. So I take it where it is embraced. The Green Party has not given me their nomination yet, but I am, as I got the domain like you requested yesterday, doing things to promote the Green Party. But I have to still acknowledge I'm running for president, so I have to promote me as well. Uh, Orson, go ahead. Yeah, um, so this is a question for all the candidates. I'm sorry I missed the uh, first 40 minutes of this, um, but uh, I saw Jasmine, you were on the Savvy Sabs podcast and you were talking about how the lack of fruit trees in this country. And so I was wondering if all the candidates could speak to um, rewilding and um, their climate plan. And I don't know if this was addressed earlier in the meeting, so I apologize if this is rehashing it, but but um, bringing back ecosystems and what you're going to do for the, the environment. I can respond to that. Go, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I'm a big organic farmer, okay? This, I'm really, really passionate about that. Look at my yard. You can see all these. I've got about 100 uh, avocado trees here, okay? I believe in organic farming. I want a, a, a garden in every house, in every apartment building across the nation. Um, the environment center stage for me. I coined the term ecologist. It's the ideological glue that holds the Green Party together. That's so important that the Green Party candidates understand that. This is why we're the Green Party. It's because of the environment. So yes, it's center stage for me. Told her out. Um, thank you. I think we're gonna have to wrap up soon but, uh, because the keynote is gonna be at two o'clock, but um, Davi, quickly. Um, okay. So uh, on first part on the climate and earth. I'm running uh, because I am connected to earth and the avatar of earth. Um, I, you can go to my website, I can communicate with all types of animals. Um, so I'm naturally connected. So what I'm doing is actually just uh, providing the foundation for humanity to have essentially um, a functional in, a functional relationship uh, with, human, with, uh, with earth. Uh, in America. So, um, for example, you know, desert, the, des the deserting of the Midwest. Deserting of the Midwest is caused by the fact that the, the, that area used to be populated by bison, and bison would poop, and manure would fertilize the land, and that land would be fertile. The reason everybody loved America when they came here was because it had such fertile soil, and that was done by the ecosystem 
that we have decided is irrelevant because of capitalism. We put squares everywhere, square, 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 regardless of what the what the environment needs. And so my 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 position is um, for us to to have a new uh, understanding of our bodies first, right? Because there's been so many lies about our own bodies. And then once we begin to, to realign with our own bodies, we begin to understand and reflect and understand and uh, appreciate <laughs> the ecology of the earth as it relates to our own bodies. Thank you, Davi. Uh, Jasmine. And then Jill. Jasmine, go ahead. Can I just have the question one more time, please? I want to make sure I don't get it wrong. Oh yeah, I was. Um, I heard you talking about um, the lack of fruit trees when you were on the Savvy Savs podcast, and I was right. wondering if you could talk more about that and in general about ecosystems and uh, what you're going to do to prevent climate change and bring about rewilding and and native plants and so forth. Thank you so much. So I just want to let people know we do have an addition to my environmental policy coming, which is exclusively an agricultural policy. What we have done with my environmental policy is we no longer utilize any fossil fuels. We switch to renewable energy only. We go ahead and restructure how the, the urban sprawl, the suburban sprawl that has happened with the way that we build. Vertical um, <clears throat> concrete jungles will become vertical jungles. So we are going to spend money to put plants and affix them to New York buildings. Like, so people understand what that looks like to create more of a healthier environment. The other thing is we will be changing out and putting in actual trees and plants that people who are walking by on the street have access to fresh fruit and vegetables. A big problem right now is we have so many food deserts. So we have to restructure the way we change beautification projects, right? Flowers that are fruit bearing and food bearing are just as pretty as tulips and violets, right? One of the things that we also need to do is to make sure that the neighborhoods are reorganized based on uh, it's called, I'm so sorry, it's a type of urban mapping. And so we know that it costs more money to fund the suburbs than it does uh, rural areas. So we will be restructuring along those roadsides, how using the environmental policy on how we can take those areas where there are less growing things because we're gonna change the way we do our road structure, right? Right now, we have a problem with microplastics in our food production, right? When you are pulling fish out of the ocean or the fish that are not dying, they are, they are, there's plastic in their system, there's cocaine in their system. So we have to change the way we produce the animals and fisheries and where we get our food. One of the big policies that I'm excited about bringing about to America is the way we change the, the chemicals that are in our food, the way we change, treat the sentient life, and the fact that we create more green areas. One of the ways that we target this instantly is within our education system, is going ahead and making sure there are gardens in every classroom by switching to a Montessori school system. There is a lot there, and I hope I, I gave you enough of it, but you can read it in my environmental policy on my website. You can schedule a meeting with me um, or the professionals that put it together. Um, there is opportunity for anybody that wants to learn more. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, just a yeah, reminder, we're up uh, 10 minutes before the keynote. Jill, go ahead. Great, thank you. I'll, I'll be really brief. <laughs> so just as a point of information, the ballot access deadlines will pretty much all be behind us by the time the party makes a nomination. Um, the, uh, the, the state deadlines are predetermined and they have nothing to do with when our actual convention happens and so on. So they are almost entirely over and done with. For example, Arizona is one of the most difficult um, ballot access states. We have to come up with 27,000 valid signatures, which means you got to collect at least twice as many. So that's over 50,000 signatures in a three month deadline, like now, the deadline is November. And you know the question is, are we really going to challenge power? Are we really going to, um, you know, give them a force that they cannot contend with. And if we can show, you know, that we are on our way to becoming a 50 state uh, campaign, whoever our candidate is, you know, it just makes us really powerful from the get go. So that's to all of the candidates. 
If you expect to be the nominee or you hope to be the nominee, we really need your support. We really need your team to help us get that ballot line now. And that's to every one of us, you know, whether you're new or whether you are a, a, a longtime Green Party activist, you know, this is our moment. This is kind of like the moment we've been working for all of our lives. And it's now. It's not like three months from now. It's like we got to hit the ground running right now. And I really encourage you to come to the ballot access workshop tomorrow. It starts, I believe, at two o'clock. Maybe somebody can check that. It's either two or three. Uh, and it's like a two hour workshop. And it's intended not only for people who are going to be out collecting signatures, but for people who want to get their states active. Or if your state already has ballot access, then you can help your neighboring state. You know, we need to, we all need to pitch in here so that we can be, you know, the force that uh, Frederick Douglass said, without which power concedes nothing. Power. Uh, you know, needs a, a challenge, it needs to be contested. And without that, power does not concede. So this is, this is it. It's now or never, folks, you know, our lives really depend, arguably on on what happens here in the next several months as to whether we reclaim the climate before it completely explodes, you know, our economy, which continues to go down the tubes with just crushing uh, inequality. And wars which the democrats and republicans can't get enough of and which are just leading us at an accelerating rate towards uh nuclear conflict so really time to stand up and fight back and we do that right now by ensuring that we're on the ballot in every state thank you so much thank you jill i know here in connecticut we're going to be working hard to get a presidential ballot line for whoever the nominee is and we're going to have to really have a big effort to collect the signatures we need here in Connecticut next year. Um, I, I, I'll put to you the question Jasmine asked in the in the chat: Would the Green Party be willing to move their proceedings up to accommodate the barriers to entry? Um, Jason, we really need to stop the chat and end the call. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to get in big trouble. If okay, this goes let's past stop. The hour. I want to thank, <laughs> thank all you. the candidates. Craig, really super quick. Really super quick. The PCSC uh, credentialing session is tomorrow at 12, so I want everybody to attend that. But there's a whole thing with if you pull up the primary date, if you're filing with the FEC for matching funds, you're basically cutting yourself out from under the knees and underwater from getting those matching funds. So that's a big debate that we'll have to have, but that's that's politics. That's the system we're up against. We have to go by the FEC guidelines. Uh, Jill's been dealing with lawsuits. Uh, every, I mean, honestly, they come after us. They're going to come after whoever the, the nominee is. So we'll have that good discussion a little bit more, uh, tomorrow. But thanks all for right, asking. Thank all right. Thank you, Craig. I want to thank all the candidates for being here. It's been a very lively discussion. We went way over time because we had a lot to talk about. Everybody, you know, I encourage you to run for office if you are considering it. We need green candidates. Um, the Congressional Campaign Committee is there to support you. Uh, the Outreach Committee is there. Thank you, everybody, for your participation, for running, for your support of these candidates. And please tune in for our keynote happening in six minutes. Any uh, Anything else, Starlene? That, is that it? Nope, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks.